Hello everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here and welcome to the next lesson in my Wanna Switch tutorial series, taking a look at learning how to edit inside of Avid's Media Composer. Now in this lesson, we're gonna take a look at project organization before you start editing. And more specifically, we're gonna look at bins and bin organization because it's something that's exceptionally important. And there's some things that you might not be aware of at first glance in Media Composer that's really gonna help speed up your workflow when you're editing. Now, I should remind you, and I'm gonna command tab into Firefox here, that if you want to download the free 30-day demo of Avid's Media Composer, you can head on over to Avid's website at avid.com and just click on the button right here to download the 30-day free trial. Okay, not a big intro. Let's just hide out of Firefox and let's command tab into Avid's Media Composer. Okay, and how every project starts is with a bin. So what I'm going to do is create a new bin and I can navigate right up here to the new bin button or you can simply come up and say file, new bin, or the shortcut on the Mac, Command and N on Windows, Control and N. So let's create a new bin by pressing Command and N on my keyboard. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna name this bin Clips because in most cases, what you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to have four main bins. I'm gonna have a Clips bin. I'm going to have a Sequences bin. I'm going to have a Graphics bin. And I'm gonna have an Audio bin. Now, something that's important to keep in mind is that what I'm doing is I'm showing you the way that I like to work, but what I like to do is also give you a lot of options so that you can work whatever is most comfortable for you. So, for example, let's say you wanted to digitize into five different clip spins, but you were gonna digitize based on the type of shot. So let's just come in here, and I'm just gonna say new bin, we'll call this close-ups. We'll create another new bin, we'll call them wide shots. And I'll just create one more here, and we'll call them mediums. What you can now do is simply navigate up to the hamburger, as I like to call it, or the drop down, and say, let's create a new folder. Let's call this folder Clips. And inside of Clips, we're going to put wide shots, we're going to put mediums, and we're going to put close ups. So you can see a different way to organize things inside of the Media Composer interface, and one that's very handy, especially if you're gonna be working on large projects. Now, in most cases, like I said, I like to stick with the four bins, sequences, graphics, clips, and audio. What I'm gonna do is just come up to the clips bin. I'm just gonna delete these bins by holding shift down to select them all. I'll just right click and say delete selected bins, and I'm even gonna delete this folder right here by simply hitting the delete key. And you can see now that in the trash, I have these bins. Obviously, at any point, I could pull these bins out of the trash if I decided I didn't want to trash them. But what I'm going to do is just navigate up. I'm going to drop down my little hamburger again, and I'm just going to simply say empty trash. Right now, it's going to say, are you sure you want to do this? I could say don't empty, but I'm pretty sure I want to delete it. So I'm just going to hit empty trash. Okay, so let's get a bin open, and let's start organizing clips in that bin. Okay, so I'm going to navigate over to Clips. I'm just going to double-click on it right here, just like that. Now, before I get started, I do want to point something out. You're going to notice that what happened was, I'm just going to close this bin here for one second. Basically, what I did there was two things. I double-clicked on the bin, and then I single-clicked on the bin. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to single-click on the bin, and you're going to notice that when I single-clicked on the bin, it opened right here. When I double clicked on it, it opened right here. And what you're also going to notice is that there was an icon in the upper left hand corner of that bin. I'm just going to single click on it again here. Let's actually just double click to get it back where I had it. You'll see that I have this bin icon here. What this icon represents is a super bin. Now, how you turn super bins on and off is fairly straightforward. And if you'll remember back to lesson one, when I talked about your settings, you'll probably remember it. I'm going to come back up to my settings. I'm going to come down to bin. I'm going to double click on it. Now, I'll just recap this quickly because the most important thing in here, autosave interval every two minutes. I always do that. I've had it for the longest time. I just leave it like that. It gives me peace of mind. But when we're talking about super bins, right down here at the bottom is where we turn super bins on and off. Now, what exactly is a super bin? Well, a super bin is strictly for organizational purposes. Now, I happen to be working on an iMac, so screen real estate is exceptionally important. So what I like to do is actually stack all of my bins inside of a super bin. So I'm just going to come back up to my bins. And what I'm going to do to open these bins is instead of double clicking on them, I'm just going to single click on them. And you're going to notice that when they open, they replace the bin that was there before right down here. I'll just open sequences just like that. Well, the great thing is now is that if I wanted to switch to the clips bin, all I have to do is click on the super bin icon and there's the clips bin. Again, audio or graphics or sequences. So super bins is a great way to work if screen real estate, like for me, is something that's very important. 
So I'm going to leave super bins on because obviously if you want to turn super bins off, you can head back to your settings into your bin setting and you can turn super bins off right there. So let's get some clips in here and let's start working with them. So I'm going to right click and instead of importing, I'm just going to link to some files here and I'm just going to select, you know, we won't do the motocross footage. Let's just do the moto footage because I've got four clips in here. I'm just going to select them all and I'm going to say open. And there's the clips inside of my bin ready to work with. Now, inside my bin, you're going to notice that I have four tabs. One that's called Brief. And if I click on Brief, you can see that Brief gives us a fairly straightforward. And what I'll do is I'll just stretch the bin out like this, just so that it's easier to see right now. Brief gives us the name, the start and the end of the clip, the duration, what the tracks are, the tape, what the source file is for AMA Link 2, and whether the clip is offline or not. Now, in most cases, you're not going to work in brief mode. What you're going to be doing is working in text mode. And you can see that once I bring out text mode, we have a whole bunch of other options in here that we might not necessarily need. But you know what? Don't worry about that right now. And I'm going to show you how we can change this in just a second. But what I do want to show you is how we can organize this a little bit. Because let's say, for example, I wanted to have the tracks actually right over here beside the clip name because that's how I prefer to look at things. You know what? No problem. I'm just going to take tracks and just drag it right over here like that. And you can see the tracks bumps everything else over and moves right beside the name. Again, if I wanted to move the video over here, I could just simply grab video, drag it right over here just like that. There we go. Video is now moved. Okay, now what if I wanted to add things and remove things? Because, you know, I have a standard view that I like to call clips, and it's something that I always set up when I create my user settings. So let me show you how to do that. You're going to notice again down here at the bottom we have another little hamburger. You're going to see hamburgers kind of popping up all over the place. And I'm going to click on the hamburger, and I'm going to navigate up to Choose Columns. Now, what I normally like to do is you can see right down here at the bottom that 14 columns are selected. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say Select Everything and then Select Nothing. And what we're going to do is I'm going to navigate down here and I'm going to select drive, duration, end, and we're going to come down to start. Where is it here? There we go. Start. And last but certainly not least, tape. And I'm simply going to say OK. And once I do, you're going to see now that I have all of the columns here all set to go. Well, not exactly all set to go because I like to have things in a certain order. Obviously, I like to have start over here first, right after the name. So start, end, duration, drive is great, and then the tape that's associated with that. Now, obviously, because these are AMA link tos, there's no tape associated with them. But now, I want to save this as a view or a bin view. So what I'm going to do is navigate right down here to Untitled, and I'm going to say Save As, and I'm going to call this Clips. Now what I can do is navigate back to the little hamburger. I'm going to come up to Choose Columns, and let's come over here and let's just add a couple more in here. Let's add, oh, I don't know. Let's add format and frames per second. Let's add offline and let's add, uh, let's add tracks. I'm going to say OK. And once I say OK, you're going to notice that my clip icon has now appeared over here on the right instead of being over here on the left. Well, that's actually easy to fix. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring these ones all the way over here to the right, just like this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch to frame view and just switch back. And there we go. Everything is the way that I like it. Now what I'm going to do is simply navigate down here and I'm going to do save as. I'm just going to call this media tool. And I'm going to say OK. Now again, how I can get in and access these after the fact if I wanted to is simply by coming up to settings. And you're going to see now under bin, I now have two settings. I have my bin view called clips and I have my bin view called media tool. Now why is this useful? Well, guess what? If there's another user that's using Media Composer and wants to have access to this, they can simply open my settings and copy my bin views out of my settings into their settings very easily. And obviously the advantage for you with bin views is this is a way to get in and set up. And when you're editing, you could have a setting called editing and just see the information you need. You could have a setting for digitizing, just see the information you want to need. So you can see that bin views is how you're going to really get in and organize yourself. Now I want to talk about these other two tabs because these are some things that are very cool that if you don't know what's in them and how they work, you're really going to miss out. And I'm actually going to jump over frame for a second and I'm going to jump down to script and you can see here that if I widen the window out what this basically is is this is a way that you can storyboard your shots what I'm going to do is I'm just going to press command and L on Mac control and L on Windows and you can see that I've bumped up the size of the frames that are associated with each one of these now what I can do is say you know this will be our opening shot that is uh, really great day shot and I can say you know in this next shot maybe we'll use this if necessary 
And this is how a producer can get in and either storyboard things or they can leave notes for the editor based on what's going on with the shot. Another great way for an assistant to leave information is in this window right here. And you'll always have access to it through the script window. Not something that I use a lot, but great to have, especially if you're working on film shoots and you're going to have different reels, different shots, different takes, and you're going to want to get in there and give notes saying, you know, great wide shot, not so good, only use the end. This is a great way to get in and be able to put in all of that information so that you have it. And the great thing is, is that if I switch back to text view, I can keep editing, editing, and you can see what's happened is, is that the comments that I've entered are actually in the comments column right over here. So I could easily get in with this shot and say, don't use this shot ever. And what's going to happen is when I come back to script view, guess what? Don't use this shot ever is now put in in script view. So again, another very handy way to work. Now, when I started out, there was another way to work, and that is in frame view. And if I click on frame view, you'll see that basically what it does is it gives me a visual representation of what I had in text view. Obviously, not as much information, but if you're more of a visual editor, this is a great way to work. Now, I know what you're probably thinking to yourself, oh, those thumbnails are so small. Well, you know what I can do? I can again press Command and A on the Mac, Control and A on Windows, and I can press Command and L on the Mac, Control and L on Windows to bump up the size of these frames as big as I might need them. So there they are at their biggest setting. What I can do now is simply come up to my bin view and I can say fill to window just like that. So that way if I have more than just the four, this is an easy way to fill the entire window with your shots because I can always take shots. I can move this over here. I can move this here. So if the producer says, well, you know what? Maybe we're going to want to start, oh, I don't know, with this shot here. And then maybe we'll go into this shot and this shot. This is a way that you can get in and really non-linear edit your piece because it's a visual way to get in and organize shots before you even drop one of them into your timeline. And here's the bonus. The bonus is, is that if the producer says, so what is with this shot here? Can I actually see this? In most cases, what you do is you drag the bin out of the way, double click on the shot, call it up here, play it, come back into your bin. Don't even need to do that. I'm simply going to select the shot. I'm going to press L on the keyboard and guess what? It's going to play right there in my bin, just like that. And I can use JKL editing to stop playing. I can play it backwards, obviously by pressing J, stop it by pressing K, play it forward by pressing L and I can double speed it, triple speed it, same thing going backwards. So you can see a way to actually mark in and out points by playing the clip in your bin without even having to take it into the edit window. Okay, so that's just basically scratching the surface of organization. But you know what? Bins are the key to your organization. Now, there's one last thing that I do want to point out before we're finished. Let's say I happen to be logging clips from home and I wanted to take this project and I wanted to send it to a friend who happened to be working at a different office. You know what? No problem taking this bin and emailing it. It's not like in Final Cut Pro where the bins are hidden inside a project. Inside Media Composer, the project is basically the shell that holds the meat and potatoes, which is the bins. So how do we take these bins and email them to someone? Well, let's do this. What I'm going to do is I'm gonna just going to rename this bin that's called Clips. I'm going to call it Wanna Switch Clips. And what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to hide out of Avid's Media Composer. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to navigate to where this project is saved. Now, obviously, if you go back into Lesson 1, you're going to see that we can really create projects wherever we want. Now, the default on the Mac is I'm going to come to the Macintosh HD. I'm going to come to Users. I'm going to come to Shared. I'm going to come to Avid Media Composer. I'm going to come into Shared Avid Projects. And there's my Wanna Switch 720p 2398 project. I'm simply going to double click on it. And there's the project information, Wanna Switch 720p 2398. But what is most important to me right now is the Wanna Switch Clips bin right there. I can simply take this. I'm going to hold Option on the Mac. I'm going to drag this out onto the desktop. And guess what? This Avid bin is now ready for me to email to anybody else. And assuming they have the same footage, say it came from a tape, I can sit at home and log all of this footage and just email bins to the office and have, let's say, maybe an assistant editor digitize the clips overnight so that they're ready for my edit first thing in the morning. So I hope you see that organization is obviously the key to any project and getting in and understanding the power of these bins and using all of the options you have at your disposal is what's key. Whether it's using text mode, whether it's using frame or script mode, whether it's coming in inside of text mode and making sure that you have all of your different bin views set to go. Remember, you can have as many different bin views as you want depending on the project you happen to be working on. And you know what? Don't be afraid to get into frame view and start reorganizing clips because if you're new to editing, it's really going to give you a good concrete understanding of how nonlinear editing really works 
and how you can use this view to your advantage to help speed up your overall workflow. So if you have any questions, if you have any comments, or if you have any tutorial requests, don't hesitate to send them to me at kevinpmcauliffe at gmail.com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.